are really going to have a significant advantage. So Create one a no, skill gap. One no Very nice spin. Okay. I'm steering. <laughs> so you saw RG controlled his exit angle on that spin. Instead of moving straight forward, he came out at an angle, which is where he was pointing his left stick. I begged him to get this in the game. Rex gave me the blessing to get it in, and this is a big deal because I want full control of my ball carrier. I want to be able to go where I want. I see the cutback lane. This is all stick work. I was an old man. Oh, they thought it was gone. Off. It still exists. You see it? <laughs> Whoopsie. That's a terrible move. That's left trigger, right trigger. I'm aiming the left stick in the in to the right. I press the B button, and he exits. The cool thing is, is he exits his spin where your left stick is aiming. So the exit the exit angles for these terrible moves are different. There's a variety. If you want to aim facing if you want to end it facing towards the sideline, you can. If you want to end the terrible move facing upfield, you can. It's completely uh, up to you as long as you're a tier 1. If you're tier 2 and tier 3 and you try to do a terrible move, you can still steer it, but it's not going to be as precise as a tier 1 type of player. Tier 1 is 90 plus, tier 2 is 80 to 90. Yeah. So so we've talked a lot about the different tiers and the different kinds of moves there are. Uh, another thing that I think is really worth mentioning, especially for our head-to-head -head guys out there, is depending on whether you're using the conservative tackle mechanic or the hit stick depends on whether you're going to get faked out or not. So there's now in Madden 17 a completely new risk to using the hit stick mechanic that wasn't there before. Uh, I think, I know at least when I played competitively, I would always try to go for a hit stick whenever I'm in the open field. But now this year I know that I'm leaving myself vulnerable to a fake out if I go for a hit stick. So you're going to have to think twice, maybe consider how many players you have rallying to the ball when you decide whether to go for a hit stick or not in the open field this year. Yeah, um, so uh, one last thing I wanted to touch on before we move on is uh, obviously I'm not going to go in deep on the tackle battles. That future is pretty self-explanatory. Um, you can probably see that it isn't like this dominating force. Uh, it just happens like, occasionally. Um, difficulty setting. So if you're on rookie or pro, you're going to get auto moves, meaning the AI is going to trigger them based on how they would normally. I don't think that's going to apply to many of you guys, but if you want to go and learn the moves and see where the coverage is, uh, going into practice mode on rookie is a really good way to do it. Um, finally, uh, one thing that Clint wanted us to talk about was the uh, the give up. Oh, the QB give up. Yes. Oh, that's dope. That's, that's dope. One. Let me show them that. Yeah, let me call it pass play. I got something else that, that's hot that we could show them after two reps, but uh, let's show them the give up first because that's tough as heck. The QB slide has changed this year. Also, the, the controls for it are different. Uh, what is it again? It's uh, LT, RT, and X. So it's going to be the same for the pocket give up as when you're in the open field and you just need to get down from someone uh, trying to tackle you. And the minute I see somebody use this mechanic in a tournament, I'm going to lose my stuff because this is like, this is real skill. Like, to give away a down isn't something a normal player is going to do. Like, you have to be really aware that I don't want to get an intentional grounding. I need to keep the clock running. I don't want to risk a strip sack. I don't want to risk an interception. I just need to keep the clock running. And in that situation, if you can, boom. Mm. Little give up swag. See, Tommy Ball game makes smart decisions you know, with like the that. Throw out a sack, that is a huge. It's pass. huge. It's, people who try to tap the button late to get out of a pass rush, that, that ball's gonna get fumbled. Yep. If anyone uses this in the right situation, you are the man, and you are good at Madden because it takes a special type of person to use a mechanic like this. But, shout out to Clint Olenberg for pushing for that. Uh, the community was begging him for it. Um, he squeezed it in at the last minute. Um, so good job to Clint. What was the last thing you wanted to show? I wanted to show something that. Shout out, uh, Rex kind of gave us and uh, everyone in QA an assignment of, hey, you guys need to improve audibles. Uh, do, what, what suggestions can we make to make audibles more fun this year, just on the base level? And we had uh, one of our tests, we had a big meeting, we all talked about it, and something that came up, uh, I believe it was one of our new testers, Showtime Sullivan, uh, shout out to, to John. Uh, came up with a really good idea of, hey, if it's a big formation, if there's one wide receiver or less, let me call timeout. I just look at that clutch. I feel like James Bond stopping in one second right Someone on the clock. By 60, by the way. He didn't beat me by 60. Oh, he beat me by 60. Oh, okay. I was about to say. I got through two quarters and I said, you want a job on gameplay? <laughs> <laughs> That's all. But the point I'm trying to make is if you're in a big formation or a goal line formation, one wide receiver or less, less instead of three passing plays now, you get – two running plays in your audible. So you can see I'm in this strong, tight formation, and I have a halfback dive and a halfback stretch in my audible. So I got two runs instead of just one, which There's makes no HP draw there. 
what game is this? <laughs> no drama, do you call the audibles? And that makes a lot of sense because when you're in a formation like this, for the most part, you want to run the ball. You don't need three passing plays. So this has really helped make these big formations uh, a lot better, which is key in gap play. This is If you're in a formation like this and someone's in quarters, you're going to eat them alive, and having the more variety of runs that you can mix up is a big deal. And I believe goal line... Uh, instead actually has three run audibles in it now and only one pass so this is a subtle change but it's something that I'm really I excited about which audibles were in which formation. you know we, we leave it to the uh, playbook guru Anthony White to, uh, you know he, he takes our feedback but as you can see there's a stretch right seal, I believe, yeah. and there's a stretch though right in my audibles you know and, and that's a big deal it, it really helps you scheme out of the run game a lot better that's a small change but something on the side okay um, with that we're gonna bring in some new guests Thank you, Mr. Will and RG, stick around. Um, Mr. Scandleberry, Mr. Wickham, would you like to join us? Cool, cool, cool.